welcome, my name is Dionysius, coming with you from MadGamer.com with an exclusive interview with Morgan Toulemon, um, Resident Evil 7's community manager for Capcom UK. Um, let's, uh, let's take a look, enjoy. In the time to arrange uh, this meeting, I'm sure it's been a very busy time. First things first, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> it's been a, quite a long, long journey, but I'm very happy where I am at the moment. So yeah, I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> awesome, awesome, it's always good to hear. Um, so Resident Evil 7, it's out, met to wide critical and commercial acclaim, 24th of January. How do you feel about the game itself, about the release, about the time leading up to the release? I feel very good. I think uh, we've worked very hard, everybody worked very hard to make it big for people because we wanted like to be a bit different, you know, because it's a horror game, so we wanted to come up with like a, a campaign that was a bit secret, not revealing enough or not revealing too much. From the feedback we got from the community, they really enjoyed the fact that we kept everything under wraps and then they had to discover the game by themselves and fresh and you know, it's a good experience, it's an amazing experience when you arrive in the game and you don't really know what's going to happen, so yeah, pretty good, pretty good. That's good, herbs are back. Herbs are back, <laughs> so yeah. Um, item management is very much back, survival yeah. horror, return to roots. Um, and I'm sure it's been especially a busy period since release. Yeah. Um, and I was wondering if you could explain what a day in the, like, a day in the life of um, a community manager, a day in the life of Gala Morgan is like. <laughs> wow, okay, so... Um, I wake up in the morning, <laughs> no I'm kidding, but uh, no, yeah, when I arrive in the office I pretty much um, check what's happening on Twitter and Facebook because that's my life, I'm hooked to Facebook and Twitter, um, so I'm checking what people are saying, what they are reacting to, if there is anything happening, I go often on Reddit as well, I'm just like, you know, lurking in the shadow and I'm checking what they do, but I'm always there, I'm always everywhere. Let's talk about the setting a little bit, the setting itself. Um, how has the community responded to the, to the Louisiana setting, the, the plantation setting, the switch to first person in the series return in general? So yeah, the community was wondering lots of things about that. Why is it there now? Why is it a new location? Why we're going to a setup which is completely new, like new characters, something new because it's a new, new thing, completely new. So they were like questioning a lot, uh, but. Overall, the reaction have been very like interesting, and people are actually like the character we bring to the table. Like they like Ethan, they like Lucas, they like Mia, or maybe not everybody like Mia, but it's questionable. <laughs> but okay. Are you you personally happy with uh, the way the fans have been receiving Resident Evil Seven? Yeah, I think you know uh, it was bold of Capcom to change his vision from you know going to third person view to a, a first person view and I think the reception has been amazing people actually realized that you know wow it's back to being like a Resident Evil something they really wanted like you have this atmosphere which is there like this this Jake which is kind of a nemesis lurking around is like is, you can't really kill him he's gonna be following you around and you are in this house which is very small very dark very scary and I think people feel it and they could like say yeah it, it bring me back to what I was when I was uh, younger and I was experiencing my first Resident Evil Welcome to the family son <coughs> Ethan and Mia it's something a bit fresh that we haven't seen really in Resident Evil previously you know it was never really about feelings or anything so I think it's very interesting and the community really enjoyed it so it's a good thing. That's that's great to have the introduction of these new characters and it's a, it's a, it's a direct continuation from Resident Evil 6, correct? Yes, correct. Okay, so um, the ending of 6, specifically Chris's ending, which I'm not going to spoil too much, um, that plays a little bit into the this game's ending, I have a feeling. A little bit, okay. maybe. <laughs> okay, okay. So moving on to a little bit of the virtual reality aspect. Um, I have not gotten the chance to play it because, like I said, I tend to steer clear from survival horror. But the way that certain scenes have been shot, like, um, say, for example, the knife going into the... Your face. The, <laughs> your face. Um, I have a feeling it was developed with that in mind. It being the first AAA experience, VR experience on the market, um, and about, I saw online that about 10% of Resident Evil players have actually been playing it in VR. Yeah. That's, that's a very good stat across all platforms. Um, how has the how's fan reception of virtual reality been? 
it, the people love the VR. They really like. I think it's something that is very new. And um, when you discover a new game plus a new experience, you know, it, it ends it completely. It's like a complete new experience for you. And the VR is so immersive. I mean, the first time I tried VR, I tried Kitchen. The first time I was there, and that was terrible. I screamed. Like I was like, I feel I'm in there. You know, your brain switched completely. You 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 forget about the world which is around you. You just in this virtual universe, but you, you feel it. You can like someone is stabbing you. You can almost feel it. And I'm like, whoa, whoa, that's too immersive for me. But that's amazing. And lots of people actually enjoy it. Like. It's, it's a good thing, people really appreciate the experience and I'm really glad that Resident Evil bring it to its best and we really work closely with uh, PlayStation to make sure that you know the, the, the community would have the best experience ever. Um, so yeah, a very amazing reaction on the VR. People are really impressed with what, it's, what we're capable of doing and what the technology is able to do nowadays because it's, it's unreal. I would have never thought about that when I was you know, 10 years old, I would never thought of VR. Yeah, yeah, of course, nah, never. So it's amazing that now it's happening and yeah, yeah. How has the reception of uh, the engine been? The engine, yeah, we have like good yeah, reaction with that. Like people were a bit surprised that we kind of moved to our own engine, but you know, we wanted to develop something that is a bit more realistic, you know, very realistic. Uh, so that's why they decided to go for photogrammetry as well. I'm sorry if I can't say this word properly, I'm French. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's like, so we've shown lots of pictures, especially at Tokyo Game Show, uh, of what we can do with this new technology, which is like, it's crazy, it's insane. You can like literally put a face and it will replicate and you can just work around it and make it like even more real, even more human, even more. So it works very well with the VR on top of that, because obviously when you have this technology, you can make it even more real. So yeah, very good. That's, that's great to hear. Um, moving on to to post-launch content a little bit. Um, Bad Footage Volume 1 is out now. Yeah. Um, it's great, it, it builds a bit on the on the puzzle aspects and survival horror that was uh, a bit of a criticism. Um, and Volume 2 is out on Valentine's Day in yeah. a few days. Um, <laughs> so can you tell me a little bit of what we can expect uh, come Valentine's Day? Yeah, well, so we're gonna find some interesting one. This one, we're gonna have a bit more of like what was the life of the baker before everything happened, which is quite interesting to see because discovering their life before before everything took place is going to be a bit funny to see them normal people, maybe, uh, can be quite interesting. Uh, but if you want more information, we also have the, the DLC trailer, which kind of show a bit more of like what to expect, so I can't really spoil it for you guys, you don't have to wait. <laughs> no worries, it's out in a few days, February 14th. Um, Going back to volume one for a second, um, the new difficulty mode that yes. was added, Ethan Must Die. Mm -hmm. I played through the game one time, so I'm not even attempting to do that. Um, but it's a great way to, to show fans what uh, what Capcom is doing to, to cater to their different needs in terms of puzzle, survival, etc. Um, and finally, just a, just a general question to top things off. You know, aside from the post credits scene that we won't talk about too much. Can we expect uh, any surprises in 2017, anything that you can let us know? Maybe, you'll have to watch the space for any surprise, I don't know, maybe. <laughs> Thank you for watching and for everything in this wonderful world of video games we live in, stay tuned to MyGamer.com.